just want to thank everybody for taking time out of your lunch hour um, to come and spend some time with us here at Working Well U. Um, this is the second of our 12 weeks of wellness series um, that is going throughout the time that we're also having a concurrent healthy wage challenge. If you have not heard about that, go and follow us on Facebook. You'll be able to learn all about what we're doing there. Um, if you didn't get in for this round, um, just stay tuned because I'm sure that we will have more opportunities to participate in that in the future. Um, but, but this 12 weeks of wellness series is available to everybody in Tallahassee. So when you see our posts so that um, everybody can jump in and take advantage of this. We've got some great speakers and presenters and topics coming up. Today, our topic is called motivation in a minute. Uh, what we're gonna do is talk about motivation um, we're going to talk about different types of motivation, how we can identify what is front and center for us, um, talk about why motivation can be so wiggly and how we can tame it. And most importantly, how we can summon it when we need it um, in a minute. Um, just to tell you a little bit about who I am. Um, my name is Heather Fusile. You might know me as Healthy Heather um, because in working well and around town. Um, I do a lot of speaking and writing and, and facilitating for healthy lifestyles and um, earned the nickname Healthy Heather. I'm a national board certified health and wellness coach. I'm a tobacco treatment specialist and I'm an employee well being consultant. Those of you who work for the city of Tallahassee probably know me as your wellness consultant. Um, I'm a proud member of WELCOA, the Wellness Council of America, um, the leading organization in employee well-being, and I'm proud to be certified by Well Coaches, um, which is our uh, the gold standard in health and wellness coaching. I mean, it's an exciting place to be. So before we jump into our objectives today, I really want to ask you to just take a moment to just breathe. <laughs> If your day has been anything like mine, here we are in the middle of the day on Wednesday and so much has already happened. So, you know, take a moment to just kind of like shake it out. Just kind of let the good air in. <sighs> Blow out everything that's in your inbox. Close that. Turn your phone upside down and put it on silent so you are not distracted by it. And just be present in this space that we're taking up today. Because in the next hour, we're gonna talk about a lot of things. Uh, I really recommend that you have a piece of paper and a pen. There is gonna be some work time for you. If you're not prepared in that way or you're not there, that's cool because this is something that you can go back and look at later. And you can um, and just listen and absorb right now and then work at your own pace. Um, and so what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about motivation in general. We're going to talk about how you just how we can discover what motivates us individually. And we're going to talk about how we can stay motivated to work towards our goals, ultimately. And a lot of the language that I'm going to use today is related to health and wellness. You might hear health and fitness. Uh, the, the concepts that we're talking about today, though, are relevant to all goals in our lives. Um, we're going to focus on health and well-being today, but you can easily apply it to your professional goals, career goals, financial goals, family goals. And so keep that broad perspective in mind. And I really hope that if a light bulb goes off for you, you can jot it down and, and make a note of that. And then at the end of this presentation, I'm happy to share my contact information. If you want to work through any of this um, a little bit more, I welcome that. So one of the first questions is, how does motivation even work? And I have this bubble here, I want, because that's really where motivation starts, recognizing that we want something. Motivation is something that helps us focus on what we want. And as a child of the 80s and 90s, I can't say what we want without saying what we really, really want. And that is part of what we're gonna talk about today. Not just what you want, but what you really, really want. Motivation is what inspires us to take action. There's plenty of times when we think about things that would be nice, that's different from being motivated and inspired to take action. And we're gonna talk about that too. 
And that motivation is what encourages us to persevere when it gets difficult. And sometimes when we talk about our motivation going away, uh, that's the time when we need to shift into a different type of motivation so that we stay connected to it. And we're gonna talk about that too. So motivation is starting with, I want, because this is the next type of motivation, understanding where it comes from. Their motivation comes from two different places. And if, if you really wanted to get technical about it, there's a lot of places that motivation comes from, but we're gonna narrow it down to two. We're gonna narrow down to motivation that comes from the inside and motivation that comes from the outside. I'm gonna start with the outside because that's where we usually start. Extrinsic motivation, also known as external motivation, outside forces that inspire us to act. A lot of times this is money. I'm gonna get a bonus. I'm gonna get an incentive. I'm going to have um, consequent, lack of consequences. In other words, that might be, um, I'm, I'm motivated to follow the rules so that I don't have to be punished or that I don't have to suffer the consequences. Sometimes we are motivated to eat healthfully because we don't want the outcome of not eating healthfully. We're motivated to get to the gym because we don't want the outcome of you know, not having exercised and burned calories and lost weight if that's your goal. Many times external motivation is having favor with, from, with others, getting compliments from other people. And sometimes that's happiness. You know, sometimes external factors generate happiness for us. And so we usually start with outside factors of something we see that we want and we want to go and get it. And that's a lot of times where we start, but it, the thing with external motivation is that it doesn't last very long because it becomes irrelevant. Eventually, you know, the, the motivation that we had in January might not matter as much to us anymore in June. And so it doesn't necessarily mean that the motivation has gone away. It just means that we have, it has expired. And that's when we go into the next type of motivation, which is internal motivation. This is inside motivation, your intrinsic motivation. And this is your internal drive to pursue the outcome no matter what happens. This is what, Matt, this is what you do when nobody else is looking. This is what you would do even if you never got a pay raise. This is what you do because it feels good because there's personal satisfaction in having done it. It's connected to your values. This is a type of motivation that doesn't go away. And we're gonna talk about how to combine these so that they are super powerful and super layered and that you can use them at any time that you need them. So motivation starts with I want and then because, you know, the reason whether it's something from the outside or something from the inside, but, there's always a but, there's always a reason why we're not ready to take action on it. And sometimes it's because the motivation just becomes irrelevant or less meaningful. If we set a goal in January to lose weight, you know, one of the most common January goals, um, by the time we get to June, if we haven't reached the goal yet, then you know, the motivation that we had in January we may feel like, well, you know, if I'm not beach ready by now, I'm not going to be. So what's the point? That's external motivation drying up and becoming irrelevant. Today, we're going to tap into internal motivation so that the but becomes smaller and that the, um, the reasons to continue be, go beyond that temporary no, um, nature of external motivation. By the way, I'll say, I'm really bad at keeping up with the chat messages. So if you have a question, just unmute yourself and ask it. Don't worry about interrupting me. Um, we'll all get along, it'll be just fine. All right, guys, so this is a picture that you've probably seen a lot, right? Somebody's saying, yeah, this is, this is the good life. And the reason why we love pictures like this is because this is, this is encapsulating for us somebody who has a solid vision of what they're working towards. 
When we can combine internal and external motivation, it means that we have a solid vision. Anybody on this call who has ever worked with me as your health coach is laughing or nodding and smiling right now because I go on and on and on about a vision. Whenever somebody does not know why they won't do what they know they should do or what they know they want to do, I ask them, do you have a vision? Where's your vision statement? That's where it is. And if we don't have that solid vision statement from the beginning, motivation will become temporary and it'll become so wiggly. Let me see if I can find it. There it is, it's wiggly. That's the word I used. <laughs> And um, so that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna create a vision statement that is a rich and layered combination of your internal and your external motivations that you can then sum it up when you're not sure why you are still working on this. Something that can be edited, something that can adapt, something that can change with you as you change. And um, by the end of this session today, you're gonna have a good start on it. Any questions before we jump into this process? All right, this is when you're gonna wanna get out some pen, pen and paper just to jot down some notes. Now, a lot of times we talk about a vision, um, you know, we talk about having a mantra, we talk about having positive thinking, you know, we talk about all of those um, shortcuts a vision is more than that. A vision is, is a, the next step up, maybe two steps up from a mantra. A mantra is something that gets you through the moment. A vision is something that gets you through your life. It's more than positive thinking. It's really taking that daydream and turning it into a reality. And what that is possible. It's a statement about what your life is about. Deeper than what you're going to get. It's about why you care and why it's worth the effort. Your vision is your happy place. You absolutely can live in your happy place. You absolutely can live in your happy place. Your vision can include behaviors. It should include actions. It should include your strengths. It should include feelings. It absolutely has to be tied to your values and your relationships. Your vision statement when you read it should give you goosebumps. It should give you confidence, energy, and a feeling of authenticity that when you read it, you know, this is me and this is what I'm about and this is what I'm going to do. Now, don't worry too much about writing this beautiful statement that is like a snapshot of you that's going to last forever. Your wellness vision is going to change. It's going to adapt over time and it should. So don't worry about getting it perfect. We're not perfect and this isn't gonna be either. It's a process that can have shapes around the edges. This is a time to think about the outcomes. A lot of times in my coaching practice, I talk about how the magic of healthy living is in the doing rather than the having. It's not necessarily about the finish line, it's about the process. It's about doing the things every day that give you energy and help you feel like you're doing something powerful and meaningful and positive for yourself. But this is a time when we're gonna talk about outcomes. What do you want? And I'm talking about beyond diet and exercise. I mean, what do you want your life to be about? What do you want to reflect back on? and be glad that you did. Especially in this world of COVID having taken away some lifestyle elements for us, things like travel, things like time with others in ways that we're used to, has definitely made me think about the times that I have put off what I wanted to go see or I wanted to do. And now I'm not sure when I'll be able to do those things. And I don't like to live in regret, but I have some. And this is a time to think about what do, what am I not willing to wait on? So I want you to think beyond fitting into the genes. That's gonna happen. Think beyond diet and exercise. Think beyond all of those things that you get and talk, think about what you want your life to be like. 
we're going to go through five elements of a wellness vision. We're going to talk about how your vision is grounded. Your vision should be bold. Your vision should be desired, palpable, and participatory. And then we're going to go through a, a, a process of like a little exercise of writing a vision. And I'm going to give you some examples of visions. And I'm going to give you a fill in the blank template. And don't worry, you don't have to write furiously. You can come back and watch this again. And I can even send it to you in a handout. Our first element of a strong vision is that it's got to be able to actually happen. This is one place that we spend a lot of time on in creating a vision because we are tempted to, to start with, well, once this happens, then I can take action. Once my husband does this, then I can do that. Once my kids do this, then I can do that. We don't want any of that business. We want to talk about what you can do no matter what anybody else does. And that's going to eliminate a lot of clutter. We're talking about what you can do, even if it rains. What you can do, even if your running partner doesn't show up. What you can do, even if you're traveling for a week for work and you're eating in restaurants every day. What can you do? It needs to be something that can happen in reality. Because if it can't, then, you know, I don't, I don't, I'm happy to go down that journey with you, but I don't know how happy you're going to be with the process. So your wellness vision needs to be something that can actually happen in reality in a reasonable amount of time so that you don't get tired of with the process of trying to achieve it without somebody else needing to do something first. That doesn't mean that you work in a vacuum. It just means that if you are waiting for another person to make a lifestyle change before you make a lifestyle change, um, you're not gonna get very far very soon. So we're working in reality, but your wellness vision should, I mean, this is your life. Do what you want. I mean, think big, get goosebumps. I want you to be thinking about the kind of thing that's like, I could. I mean, it would be hard and I would have to work at it, but I mean, I could. And wow, wouldn't that be amazing? And everybody has something like that. You might have to push some mental talk to the side to get to it, but I bet there's something related to your health and well being that you wonder could I? I mean, yes, I could, I have the skills, but am I willing to do it? I could be, and wow, that would be awesome. Um, if for some, you know, that's gonna be crossing the finish line of a race. Uh, you know, for others, it might be, you know, feeling brave enough to go out on the beach in their swimsuit and feeling confident and comfortable in their skin. You know, for some, it might be getting off medications. Everybody's got something that makes them feel like, wow, if I could pull that off, that would be amazing. That's where I want you to be. I want you to be realistic. Like, yeah, I mean, this is something that could happen and it's going to take some work, but go for it. It needs to be something you really, really want. I chose this picture because this man is thinking about something that he's looking forward to. And he has this look on his face of satisfaction and confidence. He knows how it's gonna feel when he has the outcome for this. And he's looking forward to it. He wants it. And the thing is, there's definitely times when that external motivation runs out and you're digging in to internal motivation, you gotta want it. Especially when there are plenty of legitimate reasons why you could not do the thing and everybody would understand. You've gotta be willing to, you've gotta be unwilling to live without this outcome. 
Now for some, I think getting off medications is a really good motivator there because that is something that affects you on such a personal level. For one, you know, it's your personal health, it's your body, it's where you live. And then, you know, there's side effects to medications that sometimes are unsavory and un uncomfortable. And then there's the expense of medications. And many times that's a deeply personal motivator that is something that people feel compelled to, to work towards. Another really powerful one, grandchildren. I have never seen somebody do a 180 as fast as I have when they find out there's a baby on the way and they realize they want to live to see a grandchild graduate college, get married and live their lives. And they don't wanna do it from the couch. They wanna be running around. They wanna be following and, and keeping up. And that's something that you've got to be unwilling to live without. You know, there are other elements that, um, you know, go into this. And, and I, I want you to think about what am, what am I not willing to give up? And what am I not willing to live without? Desired. It needs to be something you really want. I wonder if you've ever traveled, you've ever um, planned a vacation when like a vacation to the beach, if you think about driving down to St. George Island and you know how it feels when you walk out on the sand and you can hear the birds and you can hear the waves and you can smell the sunscreen and it's like you're sitting in your office and you know you're gonna go on the weekend and you just cannot wait and you can just transport yourself there. That's what it means when your goals are palpable and your vision is palpable. It's something that you could just reach out and grab. That's why I chose this picture of lemons. I bet that your mouth had a response when you saw those lemons and they, it started to tell you something. And that's because this picture is palpable. You know what this does to you. I want your vision statement to do the same thing. That's why I talked about the goosebumps. When you look at your vision statement, and if you decide to do, go so far as to make a vision board, um, to be, have a big smile when you see it, because you, you know how great it's gonna feel to be there. And so working towards that until you are so connected to how much you look forward to being in that place that you're willing to do what it takes to get there. And then the last element, participatory. It's gotta be something that you can start doing today. You don't have to achieve it today, but I want you to participate in it today. I chose this picture because this is, there's so much going on here. You can see that the person, the people are, they're smiling and laughing and they're obviously full. They're congratulating each other and they're celebrating. They've worked hard for something and they've achieved it. And, and it looks like they have just finished the color run or something like that. And so it's a really fun event. And I'm guessing that this might be their first 5K and they can't believe they completed it. And this is a wonderful example of participatory goals and participatory vision because in order to get to your destination, you have to play the part. So even if you're not ready to, in this example, run a 5K or run a 10K or you know, finish a whole orange theory class or climb a mountain, you are able to do some element of that. Maybe you volunteer at an event that is in the place where you want to be. Maybe you start, you join a Facebook group or you, you join a club that is related to the topic that you want to be an expert on. You participate in ways that connect to the values that you have. It's really helpful if this is layered with relationships, um, with, with people in your life, if it's connected to your values, because then it's just more fun.
And so I hope that you can see that through these five elements of being grounded in reality, I mean, we got to talk about stuff that can actually happen, but big, let's talk about something you really, really want. And then it's desire, something that you're, you're not only not that you're willing to work hard for, but that you're not really cool with letting your life happen without this being part of it. That it's something that is palpable. It's just so meaningful to you that you can really just be there. And that it's something that you can participate in right away, even at a very entry level. Even if it's reading a book about the subject matter, even if it's just shopping for the exercise clothes, you know, even if it's just going on a grocery store tour, you know, and learning about the foods that you want to start cooking, you can always find a level of participation. I'm going to leave this one up for a while in case you want to write this down, but I'll also be happy to send it to you. Here are some questions that you can ask yourself to start discovering how you can combine these types of motivation. Um, the first one, who do I want to be? Another way of asking this question is how would I like to be described by others? Sometimes it's hard to, to know who we want to be, but it can be easier to think about how you would want your friends to describe you to somebody. How would I like to be described by others? What do I want to have happen? And I mean specific. Specific is terrific. What do I want to have happen specifically? Behaviors. What behaviors do I want to be doing consistently? And this is something that I, um, whoops, sorry. This is something that I, um, always stress with my clients is to, when we're, when, when we're setting a session and we're going to talk about three month goals, I don't want to know what do you want to have achieved in three months. I want to know what do you want to be consistently doing in three months, consistently exercising three days a week. I want to be consistently cooking at home. I want to be consistently bringing my lunch to work. I want to be consistently calling my family and having quality conversations. What do you want to be doing consistently? Not just what do you get? but what, that was the outcome. And then the behavior is, what do I do? What do I want to be doing? Why, why does this matter to me? This is where we're talking about desired. We're talking about palpable. We're talking about the things that you're not willing to live without. I'm not willing to let my time on this earth end without me having done this because that's who I am. Strengths, this can be another tricky one um, when it comes to figuring out what our own strengths are. What do you bring to the table? What are you good at that's gonna make this easier? If you're not sure, ask a friend. What can I be relied on for? What do you think of me for? What would you tell somebody else that I'm good at? And then ask, how can I use this to make this process easier? I'm really organized. I'm really self-motivated. I'm very friendly. I'm outgoing. I'm not afraid to reach out and talk to other people. How can I use those things to make this easier? Challenges. You got to be real with yourself. What usually trips me up? When I'm not successful, what was it that got in the way? What When I was doing great and I was clicking along and then I stopped, what was it that stopped me? How did that happen that that stopped me? What was the dialogue of, well, I could, but, but what? Listen, not with judgment, listen observationally. Interesting, that's interesting, write it down. Oh, I didn't because I felt like I needed to do these other things first for these other people. And then for some reason I, I decided that meant that I couldn't do what I needed to do. That's interesting. What should you plan for? How could you get discouraged? And then the next step, what or who can I rely on for support? What can I do now that I know to make it easier to keep going? You don't necessarily have to keep going at the same pace, but if you know that there are certain circumstances that tend to slow you down, 
then consider, okay, so when that happens, because it will happen again, when that happens, what do I know that I could do so that I don't stop? Maybe I just move slower, I'm still moving towards it, but I don't stop. Remember, this is an, an evolving process. This is about learning what you want, why you want it, why it's worth working for, and then what do you know about yourself that can keep yourself moving forward? Okay, here we go. We're going to spend some time working on this. I have said a lot of words in a short period of time. And so I wonder, are there any questions, anything that needs to be clarified before we move into doing some independent work? Go ahead and speak up. And if I don't hear anything, I'm going to assume that I am um, a genius and I'm telling you all the things that you need to know or that I'm telling you nothing new and you're waiting for me to, to tell you something that you didn't know. All right, I'm gonna let either one of those be true. Here's um, a good way to get started. And this is a template that I actually use with my clients uh, when we're creating a wellness vision. Um, I like to do fill in the blank. Um, I, you know, it, like I, I like to simplify um, and just get down into the nitty gritty. And so here's an example of how you can do that. In my wellness vision, I am blank, blank, and blank. I like adjectives here. I'm gonna show you um, after this slide, I'm gonna show you three examples of ways that this can be written. Like adjectives here, I am active, I am calm, and I am fit. Um, it could also say, I am tobacco free, I am sober, and I am at peace. I want you to think forward to what it is that you are striving for. And the reason is because when motivation feels wobbly and wiggly, I want you to be able to read this paragraph, which you're gonna end up with, and it's gonna remind you, yeah, you're right. All I have to do is keep going. I don't have to master this. I just have to take the next step. And I want to, because this is a part of my life that I'm unwilling to live without. So in my wellness vision, I am this, I am this, and I am this. This is where we get into the behaviors and the motivations. I blank daily to have an outcome because this is why. So I exercise daily to strengthen my body because I want to age, age well with my grandchildren. I want to enjoy life without limitations. So I do the thing, the behavior, to get the outcome because this is why, okay? Now we're gonna build in behaviors and strengths. I enjoy this outcome, which is a benefit of my commitment to this behavior, okay? So I enjoy, I enjoy traveling, which is a benefit to my commitment to um, a strong body. I enjoy, um, I enjoy time with friends, which is a benefit of my commitment to time management. I enjoy being at the beach, which is a benefit of my commitment to making time for self-care. So I enjoy doing the thing, or it could be an outcome, which is a benefit of my commitment to whatever it is that you need to do to get the outcome. That one is, you know, that one can go in a few different directions. Outcome, as a result, I am now blank. I did it. I did all these things and now I am a triathlete. I did these things and now I am back in my jeans. I did these things and now I am tobacco free. I did it. As a result, I am this. 
but we're keeping it real when things get tough i know that i can blank and blank this is we're talking about supports and we're talking about strengths and then i always like to have so some example of this i know that i can call call a friend and um say a prayer <laughs> whatever works well for you i know i have these things in my back pocket and then always i like to wrap it up with every day is not easy we're not saying this is going to be this is just a copy paste situation but i know that i have the tools that i need to be successful so you're gonna i'm gonna send this to you so you don't need to worry about writing it down and we're also going to have it on another slide but before we go into some independent work i want to show you some examples of ways that others have written vision statements these are my actual clients so these are real people in my wellness vision i am fit strong fit and active I embrace challenges and i enjoy the sense of accomplishment i feel when they are overcome planning and strength training are stress relief outlets for me and time when i can be alone with my thoughts so here we have the outcome i'm strong fit and active the action, I embrace challenges and the motivation here is an internal sense of accomplishment when they're done, it's just personal satisfaction. Here's the doing, running and strength training and here's the motivation are stress relief outlets for me and time when I can be alone with my thoughts. I value my morning workouts because of the peace they bring and the pride I feel when I take care of myself. I always show up and do my best. In the past year, I've increased my cardiovascular endurance and my muscular strength and I can feel the difference. I can run further and faster and lift heavier weights. So these are outcomes. And this is um, looking forward to what it is that, that they want to achieve. I feel strong and vibrant. I'm having a great time pushing my limits and raising the bar of personal fitness. Our next example. In my wellness vision, I am traveling along a healthy path, confident in my ability to make consistent, healthy choices and fully accepting of what lies ahead. This particular client is somebody who, control, who um, described himself as a control freak, and he had a hard time letting go of being in control of all circumstances. And so fully accepting of what lies ahead um, was a big part of his vision. I have the ability, the tools, and the support to achieve greater health for myself. By using discipline, my strength of organization skills, and my positive attitude, I've lost over 150 pounds and reclaimed the health and vitality of younger days. So this is looking forward to what will have been. And this vision statement was a year ahead. I do yoga regularly. I keep an eye on my portions and I stay active to maintain my weight. I feel light and strong. I no longer have joint pain. This is another motivator. And my health risks have declined. It's not always easy to make myself a priority. But when I'm surrounded by healthy, positive people, there's some support networks, I thrive. Last one. In my wellness vision, I am energetic, balanced, and fit. I enjoy raising my two children as they grow up and being able to work in a profession that makes me proud. Balance is not always easy, but making time for myself in the evenings to read or meditate and time in the mornings for exercise a few days a week is achievable and rewarding. I've lost 15 to 20 pounds in the past year thanks to smaller portions, that's an action, more water, action, behavior, and more mindfulness with my food choices. My attitude has shifted. I'm more confident than ever that I can do the things that keep me healthy and strong. Raising a family keeps me busy, but we're not in a race. Baby steps are perfect for us. This was, um, this is a female who um, was struggling with perfectionism and she um, was trying to do all the things and, um, and her vision was really to be able to take care of herself and challenge herself um, without putting too much pressure on herself to, to be perfect in every way. Okay, so I'm going to be quiet for a few minutes and give you time to work. I'm going to take five, 10 minutes. And I encourage you to just work on this a little bit and see what you come up with.
sometimes a vision statement is something that is three months out. Sometimes it's six months out. Sometimes it's a year. It's up to you. Depends on where you are in your life. If you've just retired, if you just had a baby, just finished having babies. <laughs> You might notice these are positive statements. We are not talking about what doesn't work. We're talking about what does work. What doesn't work can go away. We're focusing on what we are gonna get, why that's important. We're not talking about what we need to stay away from. We need to talk, we're talking about what we want to go towards. This is not a punitive process. We're not being punished for anything. We are going forward with joy and excitement. I'll also challenge you to be indulgent, be selfish. This is for you. You deserve to have this. You are not gonna do something that is unfair to others. You're just not that kind of a person. Go ahead and say what it is that you want. Sometimes the reason why positive thinking doesn't always work is because it does not take into consideration the reality. And that's where the challenges and supports come in. Your, vet, your vision statement needs to include the reality of what could actually trip you up, what does typically get in the way, but then shifting that a little bit and, and molding that a little bit into, okay, that's cool, that's fair, I can expect that, how can I make this work? more minutes and we're going to move on to questions and answers. Okay. Full transparency, I can't remember what's on the next slide. We're going to find out together. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Whether or not you have actually written a vision statement, and in a minute I'm going to stop my screen share, and anybody who wants to, um, to participate in a, in a discussion about the process that we just went through. Um, I look forward to that. Um, whether you have just gotten started or whether you've just written something and you are just really excited about it, I encourage you to continue to refine this and keep it in a place where you can summon it when necessary. 
And remember that each step along the way does not have to be victory. It just needs to be working towards it. Um, you know, who was it that said motivation doesn't last? That's why we, no, motivation is like bathing. You have to do it daily. I can't remember who said that, Zig Ziglar. You know, it's the type of thing that changes. Uh, we shouldn't be surprised when our motivation goes away. It doesn't really go away, it just changes. And that's okay, I mean, everything does. And so going into our goal setting with the expectation that our motivation is going to change, I think is, is fair. Um, but we can deepen that when we have a true vision of what it is that we're really working towards and why it's worth the hassle and why it's worth the extra effort. And so I ask, your, ask you now, looking at what you have come up with, if you have come up with anything, what needs to happen first? How can you participate in this? And it's okay if you don't have an answer right now, but when you do get to the point where you feel like you have a statement like that, then ask yourself, okay, so now what? What do I do? What's the first step? What If this was somebody else, what would I tell them to do? It's always easier to tell somebody else, right? What's the first step? So what should I do? Oh, good, y'all didn't leave. I have a question. Yes. Um, I have several goals in mind and I was wondering, I noticed that your vision statements rely, relate to one specific goal. Mm -hmm. So when you combine multiples, you write multiple vision statements or you, do you, cause it gets kind of wordy when you add multiple things in. Give me an example of the different goals that you have, if you don't mind sharing. Okay, fitness and um, I guess decluttering. Okay, because you've recently retired. Yes, and I'm kind of a clutterholic and I'm still working on that. And it's pretty hard to motivate yourself to work on that. Or for me anyway. So you have, you have, um, you have an interest in fitness and then you also have the interest in decluttering your home. And what is that going to bring you? Why, why do you want to do that? Well, the fitness will um, just improve my life and, and allow me to do things that I'm not, not that I can do, but they're not as easy or as fun. Okay. The decluttering will just bring peace. So it's, it sounds like you are, you've got two main focuses of where you want to be dedicating your time and one into something that is going to be energizing you exercise. that's going to give you more functionality in your life. And then another that is going to be, give you peace of mind with the decluttering. Right. Is this a time management? goal? Is this a time uh, scheduling type of situation? Um, well, yes, I guess it's scheduling, you know, allocating time to do the things, but also it's a motivational thing. It's um, if you're, if exercise isn't exciting, then um, it's kind of hard to force yourself. I've tried the putting the sneakers out the night before and all of that, but. I wonder if you had to choose one, exercise or decluttering, which would you choose? Exercise. Oh, really? I think that, why. well, that imposes structure. Okay. And so I think that that structure and that um, 
the positivity of it and the just feeling better about yourself would it would impact the um, focus on decluttering because I would feel better and I would um, want to that would affect other parts of my life. The exercise would motivate you to do the decluttering. Yes. Oh, wow. So they are linked. I think so. I think it's um, feeling better about yourself and being more fit impacts a lot of areas of your life. Would it be fair to say that if you had exercise in your day, it would open the door to having the motivation to declutter and to have energy and to do other things? Is exercise kind of the pin? Well, fitness in general, exercise and um, mindful eating, um, that kind of thing. So that sounds to me like it's one of your deal breakers, kind of like if I don't have fitness and health, then really nothing else in my day can start. Right. So in other words, we need to break it down to, to we really need to think about it and um, break it down to the common factor or the most important thing that is stopping you from doing other things. Yes, I agree. And I think that one word that you used um, a few moments ago is really key, exciting. Um, you know, when you do have some competing goals um, or you have some that you're not sure where to start, like um, Lourdes just typed in the comment, how do you eat an elephant? Um, you start with where you're the most excited, <laughs> you know, start with what sounds like the most fun or what sounds like the least pain, um, you know, where it's going to be the easiest to get started. Um, and the reason is because all of that stuff is going to happen once you get the, once you get the momentum built up and you get going. Um, and I don't often see success when people begin with the hardest part of the journey. I think if we start with the easiest, the part where we're looking that we're looking forward to, um, then you start building up the momentum that that gives you the confidence and the energy to tackle the bigger stuff. Okay, thank you. Does that help? Yes. Good. Any other questions? Um, about exercise. Um, well, I started doing the ab doer, which really motivated me to go walking and things like that. The ab doer is, to me was one of the best tools to get me because I'm not motivated to exercise. And this was a, an exercise that I could do sitting down in front of a video that was explaining to me what to do. And it has really strengthened my core to the point where walking and things like that are much easier. And now we've even brought in a um, one of those Nordic track kind of machines into the house. And I'm, I'm incorporating that like every other day and still right. doing the ab doer once every day. Um, I think that if you enjoy the exercise and see a benefit quickly from it, it really helps. Yes. And hire somebody I to declutter. Don't do it. <laughs> There's another option. We had a question of what is an ab doer? Can you explain the ab doer to us, Lourdes? Yeah, if you go online um, and just Google ab doer, it's a sitting type of machine. You sit on it, it's very small. It takes up very little space, comes with some DVDs and even some healthy eating habits that you can develop. Um, you sit on it, um, but I don't know exactly how to describe it, but it has a, a the chair that swivels and it has some things to hold on to that you can do side by side. So you can do your oblique, your core, but it basically strengthens your core. If you Google it, abdoer.com, you can see exactly how it works. And is it cool. one word or is D-O-E-R? D-O-E-R, yes, abdoer. Okay. What Lourdes has demonstrated here is um, starting 
with something that sounds fun. You know, she said, I'm not motivated to exercise, but I could do the ab doer. And there is going to be no end to fitness experts telling you what is going to be the best thing for you to do. Don't worry about what's the best thing for you to do. Start with what sounds fun and that you that you can actually see yourself doing. There's so many ways to get in shape. There's so many ways to exercise. Don't worry about whether or not it's the best way or if it's you know what everybody else is doing. Start with what sounds achievable and fun to you and just start there. Doing something that feels rewarding right away is going to inspire you to keep doing more and to add more complexity and more challenge. So I, it's another, um, another way of saying it is like start ugly, you know, just like don't overthink it. Just start with what you enjoy or what you know has worked in the past, as long as it's a Incredible, balanced way and it's not too extreme and just go with it for as long as you like it and then do something else. It's supposed to be fun. Any other questions? Heather, I didn't, this is Mary. I, I didn't see this address, but you know, for most of us, we, um, you know, hang out with people that are, you know, doing the same things we're doing. So if you're a smoker, you're generally hanging out with smokers. If you like to go eat pizza a lot and Mexican and very fattening food, you're probably hanging out with people that you did and, and drinking and not exercising and just about anything. And so if there's a behavior, you know, that you want to change, but you know, one of the first things that's going to happen is your social group is going to be like, what's up with that? You know, and kind of give you a hard time and challenge you. I mean, and of course, I think always some will be supportive, but as you know, some will, you know, they, they want you, they like you like that. They want you to stay like that. So I didn't see anything like that about obstacles or barriers that you perceive immediately that could happen. But how do you think through that? I think it's really important. That's a very good point. Um, and having a, a good support network, even if it's one solid friend who is on the same page as you, that you can... Um, connect with and um, have as either an accountability partner, or a positivity partner, um, you know, just to stay, you know, kind of keep tabs on each other can be really helpful. Um, also, I think it's, that's a good time to um, take a good look at your expectations. If there are choices, there are times in life when we make choices about, um, you know, where we're going to spend our time and who we're going to spend our time with. And most of our friends are going to be supportive when we're honest about, hey, this is what I'm doing now. Um, and I'm, I really appreciate your support. Most of our great friends are going to be totally on board with that. Um, there's always going to be people who make it challenging. Um, and I think that you have to be honest with yourself about what your expectations are. Um, considering the environment that you choose to participate in. Um, if you are in a situation where you are not able to, um, to spend time with other groups, then you might need to lower the expectations of progress um, that you could have if you were willing and able to, um, to find a new group. But that's also a really good part of the participatory part, finding groups that you can participate in that share your interest. It doesn't necessarily mean you have to end relationships with people who don't share this interest, but seek out um, groups that do um, so that you are surrounding yourself at least some of your time with other people who are in the same line of thinking you are. And so sometimes that's a support group, sometimes it's an exercise group, sometimes it's an online group, um, but seeking out people who do share it. Yeah. You know, I see it sometimes even in families with husbands and wives. I know when I was started bodybuilding and cut out sugar and Doritos and all that other kind of stuff and was trying to cut it out because the kids were young and my husband was bent on sabotaging me. You know, it almost became a battle between us, but it was really cool because it really taught me a lot about, you know, sticking with my values and, and you know, that you don't, it doesn't matter what somebody else chooses to do. You don't have to go along with it, so... It can be, but it can be a challenge right off the bat. Absolutely. That's where the realistic part comes in. And that's why I put so much of an emphasis on what can you do, even if the other person who you need to do something doesn't do it. Right. What can you do, even if 
your spouse is not supportive. Right. And sometimes that is a limiting factor, but I always try to, to, to figure out, well, okay, so what could happen? What could happen? Let's keep it realistic. What could happen? But that's probably a good thing to think about when you're creating the vision, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, kind of know there's going to be some, somebody that you're going to have to really show them that you're committed to it, you know? Yep. We're right at one o'clock. So I want to everybody's time. Um, but if you have any additional questions that I wasn't able to answer, um, you know, please don't hesitate to reach out. This recording will be uploaded to Working Well You. Um, and so you'll be able to reference that back. And I look forward to hearing from you. And I hope that you'll tune in for our future seminars. Um, it's good. There'll be weekly for the next 10 weeks after this. Uh, so welcome to Working Well. And thanks for being here. And Thank you very much. Job. Thank you so much. That was wonderful. Bye, everybody. Um, I Thank do you. have a quick question. If we wanted yes. to contact you um, further,